good morning dear students today we shall study in class 8 the chapter is expansion of british power in india today we shall study in history second chapter in this chapter we shall study how the british become victorious in india first of all they came in india as traders and slowly they captured one by one the whole of india first we see that in 1600 east india company established in india and slowly they started first their making of factory in surat 1612 then again they established their factory in 1651 at hubli in kolkata and next we see that 1746 to 1663 1746 to 1663 these are the periods when the british fought against french in carnatic wars you know that french were the most rival of british the clashed for trading rivalry in india but the british were able to defeat the french because of the many reasons first the english were most wealthier than the french second the british had help from the british government in britain they again they were free from taking decisions they were free to do any action on the other hand the french were not free like the british again they were lacking resources like in wealth again the british had great commanders like warren hastings robert clive and etc but the french had duple but duple was calling in france due to war against the british in europe so we see that the british became victorious became victorious in india and second we see 1757 the date all you know that the battle of palasi this was the battle which paved the way of the british to establish its foot on the indian soil the battle fought between the british and the king of bengal sirajuddaulah both clashed on in on 1757 on date of 23 june but the result was obvious favor favoring the british because the british especially clive was very clever they made mir zafar the commander in chief of siraj dola made his ally they persuaded mir zafar to help in the battle in return the british will make him the king of bengal so you see that mir zafar was treacherous they team they made india's defeat clear in battle of palasi his army did not fight against the british at all they helped the british rather so this battle battle of palasi was like match fixing before the battle it was fixed in the favor of the british and result was clear sirajuddaulah was captured and killed later in this way the british got the right of diwani diwani means revenue power collecting 
the revenue from Bengal because you know that Bengal was at that time the most richest and largest state province of India. And after 1757 Battle of Palasi, we see that 1764, the Battle of Baksha. Again, in this battle, the British became victorious. 16, 1764, Battle of Baksha. You see that in this, the three joint powers of India, first, first Bengal's ruler, Mir Qasim II, Abbas ruler Sudaudola and Salam II of uh, Delhi Emperor. So we see that the three powers of India jointly faced the British, but result was the same. The British were victorious and the Indians were defeated. So we see that the Battle of Baksar made India slave to the British. The Baksar battle was proved that the British is now the supreme boss, superpower of India. No central authority left to check the activities of the British. Now we see that 1767-1769, this is the period when the British defeated Mysore. They fought three battles against Mysore. First, in 1767, in first battle, the British were defeated by Hadali, the ruler of Mysore. But second and third battle of Mysore, the British became victorious. The Tipu Sultan, the son of Hadali, was defeated by the British, although the French tried to help Tipu, but Tipu was not so clever than his father Hadali because Tipu was brave but not clever like Hadali and the British was on the other hand very clever. They made India's other powers like Maratha, the Nizam of Hyderabad, all were helpful to the British. Tipu could not make joint front of Indian powers against the British, so was the cause of the defeat of the Tipu. Now we see 1775 to 1818, this is the period when Marathas were fighting against the British. Marathas also fought four battles against the British, but the result was the same. The Marathas were powerful, but they were not united, so they were defeated by the British. Again we see 1849, Punjab was annexed by the British, Punjab's ruler was Ranjit Singh and he was powerful but after his decline, after his death, the British were badly finding easy to conquer Punjab. Again we see that 1856, the British annexed Awadh in UP, Awadh were called today's Lucknow. Lucknow was called Awadh in previous time. Now we see that the British had many strategies to conquer India. First, subsidiary alliance. This alliance made the British that they were now the supreme power and the all rulers of India must consider him the supreme power. The rulers who accepted the alliance of the British, they were given security by the British and in return the rulers of India who accepted the doctrine of subsidiary alliance, they were they had to keep a British resident in their court 
and the rulers of India who accepted subsidy alliance have also to pay money, salary to the British forces. In this way, we see that subsidy alliance was helpful in conquering the Indian territories like Satara, Jhansi, Nagpur were captured by British on the ground of subsidy alliance. Again, we see that the doctrine of paramountcy means the doctrine of supremacy. It was also the policy the British wanted to conquer India. In this policy, the British were able to conquer the ruler of Karnataka, a small province and other states. Again, we see that doctrine of lapse. It was introduced by Lord Dalhousie, and Lord Dalhousie was very expensive policy he followed. He made the Indian rulers that if they had no hair, hair means they have no natural hair, then they had their kingdom will be annexed into the British Empire. In this theory, the British captured Jhansi, other states of India. And we see that the reasons of success of British in India, first were lack of unity among the Indian rulers. Second, the Indian rulers were not able to give a united front to the British. So we see that lack of unity was the main cause of defeat of Indians. Second, we see that there were no strong central authority in India to check the activities of the British. The Marathas has power, but they were divided force, they were in division. Again, we see the, that the British were far superior in artillery, disciplined and trained. On the other hand, Indians were not good at warfare, they had not modern weapons and they were not disciplined and trained like the British. So we see that the British were able to defeat Indians due to these reasons and we see that expansion of British power in India by coming as traders, they become the master of India. In this way, India was the victim of the British rule for about 200 years. And again, we see that we have to study next time. Now, thank you.